Okay, in this example, we'll create a math uh, class and add some methods. And I want to talk uh, specifically about access modifiers for the methods. So here we have our main class. I'm going to go outside of the class. Make sure your main class is closed. I'm going to create a new class. And I'll call it math. And let's define a couple of methods. So first I'll do public int add int a int b now I have a subtract method again with two parameters and I'm going to just take this and add a multiply and multiply as well and it will end it there. Okay, so we have three methods now. <laughs> I forgot to change the name. Okay, so we have three methods add, subtract, and multiply. And at the moment, they're all public. So what I want to do is I want to change add so that it's private. And let's go ahead and create a, an instance of our math class. And let's try to call these methods. So if I say math object, uh, REPL does just a little bit of code sense uh, or IntelliSense to know what's uh, available after we type the dot, which is the access operator. Now, most installed IDEs at this point would have a big list of all of the methods and properties. So if you want to see that, you could install something like Visual Studio um, and you'd see a big drop-down list of all the properties and methods that are available at this point from the class. Now, REPL does a little bit of it once you type the first letter. So if we type A, you'll see add, uh, and that's kind of misleading. So if I run it, it will say error. Math.add is inaccessible due to its protection level. Now, in most modern, modern IDEs, you won't see add listed at all. Uh, REPL just doesn't have quite the, the level of uh, IntelliSense that most modern installed IDEs have. So, uh, what does this mean? It is inaccessible due to its protection level. Protection level refers to the access modifier that we specified on the add method. And there's really three levels that we use. Uh, they are private, public, and protected. And what that means is we can use add inside of the math class. So we refer to anything inside the class as this. So we can say this dot add two and three. And uh, actually, could we implement? We could implement maybe. Uh, oh no, we could really. Uh, yeah, we could. Let's do this. Let's say this dot add a and minus b. Okay, so we're implementing the subtract track, subtract method with the add. Um, so we know that we can't call this add method because it's private. What that means is if it's private, it's only available inside of the math class itself. Um, we can call the subtract method though because it's public. And if it's public, then we can call it anywhere we have uh, uh, anywhere we have access to the a path to the file, basically. Is so we can call subtract from the main class because it's public, uh, and we'll see that we can re we can call the add method from inside the math class even though it's private. So let's change this to subtract and run it now, and. Oh, we actually need to output something. <laughs> so we've returned the value, but we haven't actually done anything. Let me do a constant a right line around it. Okay. So what we've done is we have called the subtract method. So in our code, it jumps to the subtract method. It runs this code, and we're calling the add method inside of the class. Even though it's private, we're still it's still available inside the class. I hope that helps clarify what these um, access modifiers are doing. 
if I make this public again, we can still call it from inside the class. And we can also call it from outside the class. So there you have it, access modifiers public and private. And uh, the third level protected means uh, if it's protected, it would not be available inside of this main class. Uh, it would be available inside of the class math code. And then it would also be available inside of any class that inherits from the math class. And we'll talk about that when we get more into the object-oriented section where we talk about inheritance.